Welcome back. This is Hayugami. We'll be looking at light in this tutorial. Now, light's a subject which I really enjoy. Um, I'm a lighting artist at heart, and hopefully, I'll be able to at least show you uh, how I do things and what I know. Ooh, there we go. Loading up our file from last time. I'll just set it up as it was. Right. So here's a little guy. I'll play a start in the corner. We're going to go ahead and make another one. So go to the entity tool here, the light bulb. Clicky, selection tool, double click. You can also hit Alt Enter to bring up this properties window. We'll, instead of info player start, in the class section, we'll type in light. Now, this is just for demonstration. Light is the um, easiest light entity to use but it is by no means the best. Um, I despise it because it just it throws light in all directions around it, and it isn't very realistic because of that, because not very many things in real life do that. Everything should be using with the, uh, the spotlight entity, which I'll show you in a moment. So we'll double click on this. We see the properties in here. Uh, we've got brightness. This is done in red, green, and blue as the first three values separated by spaces. And the fourth value is brightness. By default, it's 200. And uh, this is, if we go pick color, this is white. Now, picking the color doesn't change the fourth value. You have to do this manually by typing it in. I'll have it at 200, which is the default. And that's that with light. Uh, the rest of it, I will link up in the description for further reading, just like I did last time. Now, we'll shift and drag this over here into the other corner. And we'll uh, name this one light underscore spot. This is the proper light entity for real men and um, women. We'll uh, see the values here. We've added outer fading angle and inner bright angle. And uh, things like focus as well. Inner bright angle, since this is actually really dark by default, which is why a lot of people don't use it, though they should, um, it's, it's quite a uh, narrow angle. So I might set this to about 40. And the fading angle, I set to about 60, 65. And the brightness. Here it's 200. I'll put this up to 500. And uh, we've got this right now. Haven't done anything to it. And I think we'll, um, we'll compile this and see the results. After running the map, here we are in game. And uh, to my right is the light underscore spot. And to my left is the light entity. Now, one's clearly darker and one's brighter. Um, personally, I'd go for this option. We can still boost this. Uh, to an even greater intensity and uh, widen the angle more. But generally, in reality, realistic light means that the ceiling is darker than the floor because, you know, I mean, how interesting is a ceiling? Everyone looks at the floor and the walls and things in the room as opposed to upwards. Over here, we just have this massive bright spot and the top of the walls are slightly brighter. But that's pretty much the only difference I can see between the two is the top of the walls and the bright bit there. Gr 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 so annoying. Uh, so, personally, I'd, yeah, I'd go for this one, and that's how Valve does it. They always use light spot for everything. Uh, every now and then, they'll use light to make a room slightly brighter, but light spot is the main light entity of the Source engine. So I'm just going to cheat here, get out some uh, weapons. We'll go for the Magnum here. We can see there are no reflections on the Magnum. Uh, this is because we haven't yet told what to make the reflections as in the game. What the game has to do is take a screenshot of this wall, of this wall, this wall, and this wall, and then of above and below. Take six screenshots from a certain point called a cube map, uh, puts them into a cube, and makes that cube appear on all reflective surfaces in a certain way to make them look like they're reflecting the world around them. So we're going to go back into Hammer and do that now. So what we're going to do is go to our little guy here, shift drag him upwards 64 units to level with the uh, the eyes there. Remember, keep a nice big grid size unless you're working with serious detail, but keep it big all the time. And I'm going to change this to an ENV, which stands for environment, underscore cube map. Mapping is the process of putting something over something else or telling something what to do using uh, red, green, and blue or brightness values. And a cube map is a, um, 
a color cube, as I said, which puts itself over reflective surfaces in the screen. And we'll leave this as it is. Uh, the default is fine. Uh, you can just read the descriptions and it makes sense here. That's what we're really going to do now. Uh, I'm going to also increase the brightness and things for this light. So we're going to go to uh, sorry, light spot. So brightness, I'd say we'll make it 700. And we'll, now nah, actually, I'm going to keep it at about 550. Inner bright angle, 45. That's not 45. Uh, and out of fading angle, I'd say 75, which is quite quite wide. You can see when I hit apply, it's like that. But that should do. I'm going to get rid of the light and see what I can do using only light spot. So we'll get them in the four corners. Do, do, do. Shift click, shift click, shift click. And hopefully. Uh, actually, I'll put one in the middle too. And this should be enough. So, save and run up again. Go. Oh. Ding. So now we're back in game. Hmm. Looking quite alright. I've used quite a dark floor, so it isn't going to reflect the light onto, uh, onto the ceiling so much. It's still quite dark. Brightness could go up a bit more. But, um. Actually, this is a really bad example. I think I might have placed the lights too low down. They should be right up near the ceiling, but uh, kind of in the middle of the room. Um, right, to get our reflections working, so if I cheat again, we can see that the reflections still aren't there. We have to go into the game console and type in build cube maps and hit enter. You can just see a flash there of the six screenshots being made. Now I'll go back to my magnum. And um, well, that's not very helpful, is it? They aren't very, uh, aren't very obvious. Let's see if I can get up the um, ah bugger. <laughs> that didn't go as planned. Uh, we'll try the scope here. Yeah. So now you can see on the scope, you can see kind of the shadows of the light. Right. Back in Hammer, we want to make. Uh, some light from the sky now. So how we do that is using a light underscore environment. But first, I'm going to teach you about leaks. Now, as soon as you start thinking of using um, going outside using the sky, we're not going to have this nice sealed environment anymore. We're going to have to have like a hole, and that's that's not very good. In this case, it's pretty obvious because we just have some walls here. We can put the sky on this block, but for some cases. Um, you're going to have a much more complex map. But you have to make sure that no matter what, brushes, solid brushes like this, encase the entire map in some shape or form. I don't rec recommend putting a big box around it. That's bad for um, a few reasons which you don't need to know, um, at the moment at least. But I, I, do, uh, I do say that you have to have it sealed up. So now making the sky is quite simple. We'll go to the face editor here browse and type in tools slash tools skybox. In my case, uh, since there are two S's before sky, just put in SSKY and it'll come up with pretty much the same thing. So tools slash tools skybox makes the sky appear there like a portal to the sky. Since the sky doesn't move, it only rotates as you move your view around. Um, we don't actually have to make a sky, we just have to put skybox here. And to go back to selection tool, uh, go to map, map properties. And uh, along here we have skybox texture name. And usually it's sky day one, day two, day three, and then it usually goes from one to about seven. Uh, if you really want to know, you can go to, uh, in the description, I'll put the link for the source sky list. It lists all the skies uh, in source games. Well, you have to own a game in order to have those skyboxes. Right. So here's a skybox. Um, currently, there's no light coming from it, so we're going to have to get a light entity. I'm going to delete these spotlights now. Actually, I'm not going to delete the middle one. Bing! Okay, I get the middle one. I'm going to change this to uh, oops, a light underscore environment right there. Hit apply. And it's a sun with a face. 
doesn't look particularly happy with me. Uh, I've overused him a bit. So we'll double click on his nose. This is the default settings for the light environment. You can go on the sky list and find some nicer settings, but I'm just going to go with what I usually do. So pitch your roll, I'm going to go with, I don't know, 220, zero. Just random numbers I'm putting in, I've seen before somewhere. Pitch minus 90 is straight down. Here I'm going to put in about minus, uh, say, 50. Brightness, I recommend a sort of a slightly orange, but mainly yellow uh, color, which is very much near white. Put it down a bit for demonstration's sake. An ambient, um, I'd say a nice blue in this case. Don't want it too colorful, I'd say move it down here, but that's quite nice. And the uh, fourth, of course, is brightness. So make the ambient about, uh, we'll leave it about 40 actually. And brightness, yeah, that's good enough. So hit apply. You've got things like the sun soften by using sun spread angle. And uh, there are other settings here for HDR mode. Okay, make sure, by the way, the pitch here is an override. You've got to know it's an override of the pitch your roll. So your yaw here is where the sun is in the sky. The pitch is how high up in the sky it is. Just so you know that. And we'll save that. And I think we'll also put in a block somewhere. Um, this will be to demonstrate shadows in a second. So I'm just going to decrease the grid size. And uh, actually, I'll do it again. I'll make a really thin block along the middle here near the top. Uh, demonstrate shadows. So we'll go. Oh, damn it. Okay, hit enter this time. That's it. And we'll make you a really boring texture because you're a hassle. Mm. Let's say you'll be some kind of plating like this. Okay. Uh, save and run map. Here's our map in episode two with a sun now. I haven't put in a sun and. Oh, God, look at that. Oh, I forgot to add underscore HDR to the end of the uh, Skybox texture name. I just realized it's a bug in episode two. You don't have to worry about it too much. So um, you can see there's a nice shadow here. Uh, this shadow should be tinted blue, but for some reason it's not. Right, so here's our thing going along. Our shadow is quite soft here and is on the floor as well. So you can see the softness, and it's kind of going around at the top there. If you want a really hard shadow, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I think this will be a better demonstration of our um, shininess, though. So I'm going to build the cube maps. Doo -doo. Fingers crossed. There we go, nice and shiny. You can see along the um, circular object, I don't know what it's called, in the middle of the gun, it's getting, yeah, there we go. You see the shininess now. Let's go into a dark, po dark part. You can see that. That's our cube map at work. Now, whatever's closest to that particular cube map, if you have multiple cube maps, which you most surely will, uh, it will display that cube map. So if I had another one over here, it would be pretty dark on the right side of this gun. And if I had one over there, it would be bright all around. So we're gonna go back into the editor now and see what we can do to that's quite quiet. Uh, what we can do to fix the shadow. Now, this is where I teach you about light map grids. This is how lighting in Source works. If you go to here, click on camera, and go to 3D uh, light map grid. Now, this is all set to 16. Each of these squares on these walls and on the floor and on, uh, on this thing here, each square is a pixel of light which holds a color and brightness. Uh, so we can see that these pixels diagonally come down and that's where our shadow is in game. So if we want more detail on our shadow we should uh, increase the number of pixels in this area so that it to be a lot harder. So I'm going to increase that um, to, well if you de decrease the light map scale which is the size of each one in uh, the world then that'll increase the number there are on the wall. So if I go to the face edit sheet here, 
um, we'll uh, select this wall. Line map scale, I'll set to 4. In fact, I'll set to 2, just to be extreme. Now let's go in. You can see that they're everywhere now. There's tons of them. Uh, this will increase the file size of your map drastically, and it will take a lot longer to compile uh, between using your map in Hammer and running it in the game. Uh, we want as, as little of this as possible to be like this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, select this wall, and I'm going to chop it up between here. Uh, just I'm using keyboard shortcuts, but I've used the clipping tool down here. YT the side, chop it up between here and here. I'm unsure which side the shadow falls on because I forgot because I'm a prat. Okay, and on each side, face edit sheet, we'll set these back to 16. You want to keep them as squares of two. Uh, it's nice and neat, and the edges line up quite nicely. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the other wall because I don't remember anything. Now back in Half-Life 2, we have a much more hard shadow now. Uh, you can notice it's a lot more bright and blue in the shadow areas because I actually increased the intensity of the ambient light. Um, anyways, that's very nice and detailed, although the map size for this is larger and um, it also did take longer to compile. Only a few seconds because it's a small map, although if you've got a large map it will take considerably longer. This is what it looked like before. You can see this light map scale on the floor here. Uh, but this is compared to the wall, which is a lot nicer. So say if you've got many of these in a row, this can produce some very nice stripy shadows on the wall. And you want those to look good, so you'll set it to a light map scale of 2 or even 4, uh, which will be um, a better compromise. I think that concludes this tutorial now. I like the word concludes, don't I? Um, I will see you next time. I don't know what I'm doing next time, but it'll be something useful, I hope. Ciao.